All right, gang, today we're going to go back in time to 1985 at the Hawaii Record Breakers meet with Ted R.C.D., one of the great bench pressers of all time, and the first guy to bench press 700 officially, I'm pretty sure. Anywho, uh, this is an article by Dennis Weiss. The 10-day countdown, kind of going... Uh, a little bit backwards here, but so be it. Uh, Ten days prior to the Hawaiian International, Ted's last heavy workout in the bench press was on Thursday. He benched 636 for a triple, followed that with 650 for a solid double. On Saturday, he did some light intensity squats and deadlifts, as it was his habit to do squats and deadlifts on Saturday. The the press behind neck was also done on this day, and on this movement, he did 370 for a triple. This was a new PR and an unofficial record, world record. But what made this lift so unique was the fact that Ted didn't want to push the behind the neck too close to the contest because he feels that he must let up a little bit in assistance work except for the triceps. Suffice to say, he didn't hold back on this lift when he returned home from Hawaii. He did a monstrous 400 for a double. He rested on Sunday, and then on Monday, it was late intensity benches and assistance work with the exception of the lying triceps extension to the nose, where Ted did 375 for six. Lap machine pulldowns were not done on this day, but were in fact done on Tuesday. Now on Wednesday, which is normally a scheduled rest day, he did some bench press work utilizing stops or pauses on the chest with 455. From this day on, it was time of absolute rest and relaxation until that following Sunday afternoon in Hawaii, where Ted made powerlifting history by benching an incredible 705 world record. Ted's powerlifting cycle, training cycle, may appear simple on paper, but he assured me that this program is explicitly calculated toward the acquisition of great strength. Now Dennis asks, Ted, <clears throat> I have a number of questions about your one-year training cycle that I would like to ask. To begin, I noticed that you work your bench press late on Monday and very heavy on Thursday. It would seem to me that a, a lifter would be at his strongest on Monday after having the weekend off. Why is your workout scheduled this way? Ted's answer is, yeah, my light day is on Monday and the heavy day is on Thursday. I feel that if I come back from a weekend, even though I don't party all that much, I'm still going to come in on Monday a little groggy. I am more into the heavy lifting on Thursday than earlier in the week. Dennis says, I noticed that your training is very minimal on Tuesday and Friday and absolutely nothing is scheduled on Wednesday and Sunday. This would suggest to me that you feel recuperation is an important consideration. Ted says, yes, recuperation abilities for individuals are different as far as working to the max and training during the week. I bench heavy once a week. I also bench extremely light once a week. On the light day, I might do 420 for five. I could probably do it for 30 reps, but I only do it for slight muscle stimulation so I don't atrophy. So, if I keep it light, I am still recuperating from the heavy session on the previous Thursday, but not detraining. In a sense, I do have seven long days of recuperation, and that is good for the bench. Also, for the heavy behind-the-neck press, if I can keep Monday a medium day and Thursday extremely late, then I go extremely heavy on them on Saturday. I do find that if I adhere to my schedule and keep it that way, I won't have any bad workouts, and I always plan my recuperation around my heavy days. So Dennis then asks, now, here is something slightly out of the norm. I noticed that you combine squats and deadlifts on the same day, on the same workout day. What's the logic behind that rather ex uh, intense exercise layout? Ted answers, I don't know why some lifters get this look of threat and dread on their face when you tell them that you squat and deadlift on the same day. It's back and legs for both lifts. You're killing two birds with one stone. You're getting both lifts taken care of in one day, and then you have six days of rest for the legs and back. That's my theory, and I know most people might not agree. Then Dennis asks, lat 
pull downs and the press behind neck seem to be important parts of your program. Is there some particular reason for this? Ted says, as I've mentioned, the behind the neck press is a great basic exercise as well as the pull down and they're very good for explosion. The initial explosion of the bar needed for heavy benching. Those two exercises definitely work what's needed to initiate the explosion. As far as the end of the lockout in the bench, it's known that the triceps do the basic locking out. I'd say they do 90% of the lockout. Dennis then says, I notice that you do lying triceps extensions to the nose in a slightly unique way. Um, could you explain your method of performance on this exercise? And Ted says, tricep extensions to the nose are the best thing. They're the greatest tricep strengthener I've ever used. You must bring the bar to your nose, and then you must bring it straight up from your nose. You don't bring the bar down to your chest and bench it. It's not a benching exercise. You triceps it up, and you use your triceps. I feel that the bar to the nose position taxes the triceps to the greatest level. And Dennis says, I notice that you do not include any single reps in your training, and in particular, the competition phase of your training. Why is that? Ted says, I just don't believe in singles, although singles are very good for explosion. You seem to favor sets of six very frequently in your workouts. Are sixes really that important? Ted says, sixes are great. You get good endurance and strength. I feel that sixes are the greatest thing that men ever came across for reps in the bench. With sixes, you're away from the heavy, heavy weight, but you still have to throw some weight around because it's not exactly lightweight. Imagine going for your best six reps. For me, that means I've got to get 560 to 570 for six. This gives me a lot of tendon and ligament strength. And this is a very important factor when getting into the heavy triples and doubles later. Because of the endurance and increased lung capacity from the sixes, you'll be able to blow up those threes and twos. So Dennis says, do you have any certain speed that you strive for when performing a repetition? And Ted says, as far as controlled speed of movement in the bench, I don't recommend a very slow or a very rapid descent of the bar to the chest. I know in the last competition, I, I let the bar come down very fast, but that was because I was doing three attempts with 666, and I had to conserve as much energy <coughs> as possible and as much ATP as possible. As far as this last contest, I thought it was executed well. I'm, de I'm descending the bar at a moderate rate, but not at a super slow rate. You bring the bar down too slow, and you're going to burn out. It's like doing negatives. I don't feel it helps. A moderate rate, a moderate speed is the answer. Dennis says, I noticed that you take some rather lengthy rest between your sets. Would you please comment on that? I do take a lot of time resting between heavy benches. I take up to five or six minutes between sets. I don't care. I want to get the weight. So that is why I take a lot of time between the sets on the heavy days. I need to feel completely ready for the next set. Now, my late days on the bench, and even with assistance work, I go very fast because I'm not going for any real heavy weights. So Dennis says, I notice that you don't constantly change your training round. I have observed some power lifters who simply refuse to follow directions and are constantly changing or adding to a workout. Do you feel that it is important to stick with a good routine providing it is providing results? Ted says, I definitely stick with a definite program throughout my training cycle. If I do make changes, it's probably due to a small bout with a cold or a cough or an illness of some kind. I might go back 5 or 10 pounds at the most, but <clears throat> the last cycle I kept everything up in training. As a matter of fact, it even makes you, uh, he your head feel better if you're about five pounds ahead of schedule. So you know if you, if you have to do some cut back at some point, you'll be all right. You're still going to break even. You have to discipline yourself. That's the only way you're going to make big gains because when, when you devise that schedule, you are devising a gain theory throughout the whole of the workout schedule. If you don't stick with that program, if you have to make a lot of changes, that probably means you're not sticking to it and you're not going to make the gains. To compromise, to, custom, to cushion the pitfall, you want to be at least five pounds ahead of schedule, ideally. Then it says, I noticed that you some, sometimes do some forced reps on your heavy benches. 
Uh, this is really incredible considering that you're using 560 to 570 for sixes. What are your thoughts on the, on the force reps? Ted says, I usually do a couple force reps on my last set of every heavy workout. I didn't do any force reps on my last workout because of the Y contest. I felt I did not and I would burn out. When you are into the competition phase of your training and it is nearing contest time, what do you use as a measuring stick for gauging each workout? And Ted says, as far as gauging myself before a contest, I figure this. I go for my best triple and my best double in my last workout. If I get them, I'm in Fat City. I'm skating. I'm all set. Uh, 